Hey there, and welcome to my channel Tech with Eddie, which is all about integrating your IT devices with your preferred home automation ecosystem. Now, on my continued quest to integrate my um, not so certified IT devices into Apple HomeKit, there is another open source platform which takes your home to the next level of smartness called Home Assistant and opens another world of possibilities, giving us a zillion ways of putting it all together. Now, what I love about Home Assistant is that not only you can integrate devices, but also add services to the platform, truly enabling your home to do things on its own and taking the home automation experience to the next level. Now, I did really want to release this video last Saturday, but had to wait for the Home Assistant conference to finish and also find out more on the product itself. It checks out that they did release a limited home automation hub called Blue for $140 and it looks like the stocks are quite limited. Has a lot of bells and whistles with regards to the hardware, very powerful specs, but also highlights the home assistant features that we all know about. But when you look at the specifications, the only missing link is that there is no Zigbee controller included and that will take up the cost to around $180 or maybe more. So here is another alternative setup around 33% cheaper to build that home assistant home automation server dedicated towards Apple HomeKit or even use it as a standalone application using a Raspberry Pi 4 and also enabling the Zigbee and MQTT network protocols. So for all of this to work and integrate with Apple HomeKit or run it as standalone, we will need a Raspberry Pi 2 GB, in my case I'll be using the 4, a memory card class 10 32 GB and also the Foscon Convi 2 controller to enable Zigbee. Now just a disclaimer, all of this research that's configured this conf config is around $112. Now I've broken down the video into three parts with the timestamps in the description. They are one, the home assistant install, two, enabling Zigbee, and three, enabling MQTT. Now, if you don't want to go through all of this hassle, you can always get a hoops out of the box solution, headache free, where you don't need to procure the parts, which is another fantastic alternative solution with great online support. And also make sure your Zigbee devices are supported by the Combi 2 as well. Like I said, there is no one size fits all. If there are other options out there that I didn't consider, please put them down in the comment section so we the community can learn from them as well. Now, don't forget to stay till the end to know which video is coming up next week. So let's not waste time, like I always say, and let's jump into this tutorial. So before we go ahead with the installation, I'd just like to quickly show you the uh, configuration that I chose for this installation and the cost that total up to $112. So this is the, the products that I'll be using to set up the uh, home, home Assistant and that's how it pulls it up to $112.11. Uh, and uh, this is the product, a transparent case that I got actually from AliExpress that totaled up to the same volume. And um, this is the... Um, Combi to stay, stick. I'm using a, a USB cable extension because I've heard that uh, if it's too close to the router, there could be some interference and may not pick up the Zigbee devices. And also at the same time, uh, this is the USB 3 port that I'll be using to connect. So you want to make sure uh, you get this extension so it's a little bit far away from the uh, router. Then from there, what we're going to do is now let's go into jump into the uh, home assistant installation. Very straightforward. Let's go to getting started. And you want to scroll down all the way for your device. And you want to pick up the uh, right image based on the model you have. So I'll be taking the RAS API 4 32-bit uh, to get the GPIO support. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to download the file. So what I've done is I've already gone ahead and downloaded the file so that we can uh, save some time and I'm just going to stop it clear and I'm just going to open the folder. So all you got to do is um, 
Use an SD card uh, adapter to have this one inserted into your computer and also make sure the lock is always uh, not enabled so it will allow you to read and write on the memory card. So all you gotta do is pop this in into your memory card reader, open the app called Belena Etcher. Flash from file, select it, and you're going to uh, select the target and then hit flash. So let it go through the, dec the decompression uh, process and then you'll flash the drive and then you should get a message once the whole process is completed uh, correctly. Once that is completed, all you gotta do is take the memory card, insert it right over here, and from there, we'll be connected to, to our router. What I've done is I'm going to use a network cable. So you want to make sure this is connected via network cable. So it gets the best uh, uh, allocation with the IP address as well as if there's any restarts or drops in your network, the uh, connection is much more faster. So let me go quickly and uh, connect this to my router and come back over here. Now, once you connect the uh, Raspberry Pi to your network, it will take a couple of minutes for, uh, to boot up and also uh, from there you will get a welcome screen that tells you that it's preparing your home assistant and also if depending on, on the image that you download it, it will download the files and also uh, once in a while, please make sure you hit the refresh button so the page is loaded and you don't get a timeout uh, connection. The process takes around about three to four, uh, around, uh, not three to four minutes, sorry, it takes between 15 to 20 minutes for the entire uh, installation process to complete. This is the welcome screen you're going to see. So you want to start off by giving it a name. So name, a username, leave it as it is, and a password. Now once this is done, You want to detect your location and also if you want to choose your metrics of how you want to measure uh, the data. From there you tap on next. Now by default it already finds devices so like I said I'm going to be dedicating it towards HomeKit as well so I'm just going to tap on HomeKit and uh, what are the devices I want to uh, expose to, the, to HomeKit. So, I'm going to leave it as it is, no changes later, I can change it. So I'm going to tap on submit, submit, and then I'm just going to give it a new area server. So this is how the home assistant will appear in my bridges and hub section. Finish. And then I'm just going to move ahead with the installation. I'll tap it on yes. Now, if you go to notifications, you can already scan this code and the HomeKit bridge will already be added to under the hub section. So you can go ahead and do that. So whatever devices you add in over here automatically is exposed towards um, HomeKit. So this is very straightforward setup with HomeKit Assistant. Um, download the image, flash it, uh, give it at least between 15 to 20 minutes, you will reach to the screen. That's about it. Now let's go ahead and install um, and enable the Zigbee network protocol. So let's go ahead and click on supervisor. Let's click on add on store. And the first thing you want to download is the DCOS control, a Zigbee network with Convy or Raspbi. So let's click on that and let's click on install. Now give it a couple of uh, seconds or minutes, depending on your network connectivity, the uh, application will be downloaded and installed. Now once the installation is completed, before you go and start any services, what you want to do is go into configuration and you want to put in the value for the device before you can uh, um, set up the application. So I've added into the description the values to be added. So in my case, I'm using the Convy2. So I'm just going to copy this value over here and I'm going to paste it here. And all I'm going to do is click on save. 
And once that's completed, I will go to info and I'm going to say show in sidebar and I'm going to say start. Then let's go to configuration, integration, and let's click on add integration, decons. So before we go ahead over here, what we can do is also type in the host name. And then we can go over here to the Foxconn application to have the authentication done. So to do that, let's close this window over here, go to decons and right click, open in a new tab. We should see the device already over here. So let's click on it. Let's give it a password. Let's reset the password. Don't use. Next. So what you want to do is for the Foxconn thing is once you have the app up and running, you want to make sure you restart it and then go into the configuration integration. Let's look for decons. Submit. Authenticate app. Submit. So let's go ahead and select the server, the area as well. Finish. Now that's how we've completed with the Zigbee setup. So uh, whatever devices that you enable over here, you can already see it being exposed to Home Assistant. Now let's go on to the next one to enable MQTT and also uh, make sure the service is up and running as well. So let's go to supervisor add on store and let's look for MQTT. That's the one over here. And all you want to do is click on install. And before you go ahead to start the service, let's go to configuration. Now for the MQTT service to work, uh, you need to provide a username and password so you can always get the security when the network protocol is up and running. So to, to do that, go under the login section and all you got to do is add in the username and password. And I'm just going to give it this password over here. And then from there, you're going to say save. And once that's completed, go to info and you want to say start service. Now let's do one thing. Let's open up the MQTT Explorer to see if the service is up and running. So that's the information and I'm just going to update the password to if it's working or not. So let's see if we can connect to it. There it is. We have the MQTT services working. So let's test it. Raw. Hello world. Publish. So successfully, the uh, MQTT service is working from the add-ons that we had installed already. The one good thing about Home Assistant is that it's all user interface. You don't need to copy any command lines and it makes it very straightforward. So this is it. We've got both of the services up and running and uh, you also now can go ahead and add in all your devices and take advantage of Home Assistant. Finally, there we are. Collaboratively, we have built our home assistant automation server dedicated towards Apple and also enables the MQTT and Zigbee network protocols. Now, to keep all of this going, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button because that's the motivator, that's the real driver. The more the merrier for bringing all of this content for us. And if there's anything I can help with, don't feel shy to leave a comment down below. I'll be glad to assist and also do visit the developers page to give them your support and love as well. So next week for the not so programmers in us, let's understand the file config.json used for hoops and homebridge. So until the next time, my friends, stay safe, have a nice day, cheers and happy automation.